Hello and welcome to episode 25 of Diggs Sideline Podcast. As always, we are your hosts. I am Sam DeCosmo. And I'm Patrick Colonia. Pat, today we are reviewing the Seattle Seahawks-Minnesota Vikings game where the Minnesota Vikings came up just short. And I feel like both of us have a lot to say about this game. Sam, I'm heartbroken. I, I, I was I was after that game when I left. I just I'm, I just went home and I just I just felt sad. I was heartbroken too. Yeah, that one hurt. It 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 hurt a lot. And I think both of us had this game. If you go back to episode one, both of us had this game as as a loss. And I think what made it so heartbreaking was that it felt very possible. Yeah. Throughout the whole, it, it started to get dark there in the third quarter, and they got our hopes up in the fourth quarter. And it just. In, in light of everything, we, we'll talk about refereeing. We'll talk about everything else. And, and e- despite everything, it still it felt possible right up until the very end. It did. You know? and, that, it, and I think that's what made it hurt yeah, more. Right. You it's know? when you have that hope. It's right. always that lingering hope. <laughs> but hope. you know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't think any of us truly gave up. Like, no. This, this is, I was going to quick say, this is the first time that we've had, we've had a team where the offense has been producing yes. as well as they have been. Right and now, it's the defense that's not. Well, I will. Okay, so I I agree with you. Um, our our run defense was, was was a bit of an issue, but I think more more so than our run defense, it was the fact that we gave up two two turnovers inside of our oh, own red zone. Yeah, you that know, didn't and help. they and they were able to get at. I can't remember if it was fourteen or it was at least ten points. They scored yeah, on each was, of them. Oh yeah, I think it, I think it was it was a field goal and a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were able to get ten points off that. Yeah, and, yeah. and you can't you you just can't win a game if you're doing that. Yeah, so you, sp- you strictly cannot. So I, I have a lot to say. I'm, I'm going to start with my thoughts on Seattle and uh, ESPN in general. So, wait, wait, before we get into that, I just want to say that Sam kicked me straight in the nuts <laughs> when we were celebrating <laughs> the first Vikings touchdown. So, no, I was, just, I was just super excited. And Pat and I, we both get aggressive. And I was, I was doing this. I, and I was excited. I was getting my legs involved. And, and, uh, and yeah. yeah and I mean, it's, it, it's, it was it's unfortunate. On it was unfortunate. Pat, I, <laughs> I apologize. That, that's all I wanted. <laughs> we can carry on. I was going to quit again. No. <laughs> all right. So I, I wanted to start with, for, let's just start from, from yeah. the, the most global perspective. Mm-hmm. ESPN. Terrible broadcasting crew. Unbelievably terrible. It's embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It's like, embarrassing. And it's not just Vikings fans that are saying it. No. Like, the, if you look at the, on the internet last night, everybody was ripping them a new one. From Booger saying that the Minneapolis Miracle went against the Vikings, yeah. which he later apologized for like in a, in a tweet after the game. But it's like, come on, dude. You can't be a commentator not knowing what one of the biggest plays in a franchise's history was to all of the weird times that they would cut to Russell Wilson being mic'd up. And I understand that you have a player that's mic'd up every game, but like... If they're saying dumb stuff, like don't no, no there's they, no need to go they back. Cut to, them. to him every chance that they could. Every chance that Listen, they could. They usually have a mic'd up player, right? And they sprinkle him in here and there. It was every after every commercial break that they were coming yeah. back on. It was every single time. So it so for, for my so Vikings fans will know that K fan is you know uh, the uh, 100.3 Vikings Network Vikings Radio. You know the Vikings are that team's network. It seemed like the Seahawks were ESPN's team 100 percent. you know not even like and i haven't i've never seen a game that espn has produced th- this year where it just felt so one-sided with the right. with all of the animations yeah, and right. all the stats that they were pulling yep. out and everything. it just seemed it was just odd to me and it, it, it as a vikings fan it, and as an nfl fan it just made it unenjoyable it really did how much they were absolutely just swooning over the seahawks and, and you know what's going to happen this is going to be the same thing when the packers play the vikings yeah, they're gonna do the same thing. Yeah, like, granted, we're gonna be at home, but it, ESPN just oh, just to bring it back. ESPN has just the worst broadcast. Group. Oh, it's just the worst. They, it's, they it's need terrible. to do. Who did you say that they need to bring in? Uh, it would okay. So it would, ESPN, please, if you're listening. Yeah, give the people what they want. We <laughs> want Dan Orlovsky and Pat McAfee on the call. Please, that would be electric. Yes. Even if they're not on a call, they deserve their own show where they're yeah. just breaking down film or something it's, like it's, that. It's that incredible. What, uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate the film breakdown. Oh, it's yeah. Just, it's fascinating. It's very fascinating. And I wish I had more knowledge on that. Yeah. Because when I do get the breakdowns, I'm like, wow, that makes perfect sense. You know? Yeah. And, and unfortunately, we can't give you guys or, you know, I can't even give myself that, you know, that joy of yeah. you know, the breakdown film. All right. So I think that's enough talk about ESPN. Before we talk about the Vikings, I want to address the Seattle Seahawks. You know, we just spent, you know, five minutes talking about how e- bad ESPN is, you know, and as a Vikings fan, I don't, I don't like, you know, you know, the Packers bother me, Packers fans bother me. 
the Seahawks don't bother me. You know, yeah. Seahawks fans, they don't bother me. You know, they're they're a very good team. They've been a good team for a long time. Pete Carroll has his annoying tendencies, but it doesn't bother me. It's right. just kind of like a characteristic of the game. And the, I, it was the same last night. They didn't – nothing Seattle did bothered me. I mean, they were committing a lot of penalties that weren't getting called, and it was just very frustrating. And I, I think that they were more and more egregious as the game went on because they realized that the refs weren't calling them. Well, there was two that we can, we can for sure highlight. Yeah, let's talk about them. So the first one was a false start. A blatant, oh, on blatant the left tackle start. on a third and five, yeah. which they got an out, it, easy, it was, easy out route. It was, it was a second and five, but oh, it, so, we, was sec- we stopped him on second down, and then it was like third and one. So it that, third, that, it that, that it would it'll push them back. But yeah, I'm talking, absolutely. I'm talking. He was clearly he off. was Two, very off. You could be blind and know that very he was off sides. Very like, off sides. I, I don't get it. How, how do you not call that? I I don't know. I don't know. And they, I mean, they seem very flag happy with the Vikings. Granted, the Vikings only had three penalties for 30 yards last night. And they did call a penalty on the Seahawks late in the game. It was a pass interference on Diggs. So they went one for 30. So in yardage situations, it it kind of evened out. But the situations in which the Vikings got their hold, I think the hold was on a huge play that went downfield. Right. Um, It it was just, you know, the situation was. And there was another. uh, Well, well, the the second one was. Okay. So now this one absolutely blew my mind. Okay. It was on tight coverage. It was it was very tight coverage on Diggs. Right. right? Okay. And we'll, I'm gonna we're gonna slip in the the picture of it. Yeah. He is draped over him. Draped he's, over. He's got him. one he's hand over, and the other is just yeah. making its way around. Before, it's the insane. ball's not even in one he's of the. He's all right, over. He's all over him. Right. And so by some miracle of God, the ball lands in the guy's hands, and he intercepts it. Right. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wh- and so wh- what, I, what I'm saying is, was they, that the interception or was that the fourth down? No, no, that was the interception. I because, think that happened on the fourth down. No, no, as well. no, that was the interception. Okay. I'm referring to the one in the interception, right? I'm okay. saying I'm saying it was defensive pass interference, yeah. right? Yep. And because but then the inter- guy came down with because it. it was intercepted, we didn't challenge oh. it. It was t- they, re- because because uh, turnover plays are automatically exactly. reviewed, exactly, and so we couldn't challenge it, right? But oh. even if we did, seeing how they they handled that, they just let it go. I and listen, I'm not trying to be biased as a you know oh no. the refs bl- the blue refs blew the game. I'm saying that was that was clear that co- was clear <laughs> that was clear pi and it's yeah, like exactly what are you gonna do? The thing I I will say um, there was only four penalties called last night and I'd almost rather see a game like that than a penalty on every other play. Yeah, but it still it hurts so to yeah. know that like you know we did everything. Well, we could. well, the flow of the game itself was was awesome. Yeah, absolutely. it was awesome. I think I was sitting there. I was like, oh, there's a flag. There's and then nothing was coming. You know. Yeah. They were but, they were letting them play football yeah, out there, but but the, the two that, one, that we're referring to were clear. Yeah, you know, there's no reason not to call it, those. It's frustrating. Yeah, it's but frustrating anyways, because those anyways. those are ter- those are non calls that cost right. us the game. But you know? but but as fans, we're gonna quick say that we didn't lose the game because of those no. per se. That no, was ab- on us. We had absolutely a fumble. Inter- you know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah, you know that penalty in that that non-call on the pass interference that that you know that ended up costing us seven points yeah right you know because that was the that was the turnover that they so ended that up one i guess we could on. say was a big difference maker that it was I was a very like big difference about very yeah. big difference maker. right um all right so that was officiating so well let, ta- let's talk about let's talk about the start of the game well okay or, yeah, or what, how did how did I, you want to go here i want i want i want to talk seattle first just oh, a little no, bit on, because on, because yeah. i i have a i have a lot of thoughts on the vikings and i just want to yeah. i just want to do some housekeeping and get all of my other thoughts out yeah, of the way of course go. So Seattle, they 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 played a very good game. Uh, Russell Wilson was not incredible. He twenty one for thirty one, two hundred twenty six yards, but he two didn't touchdowns need to be. And an interception. He, he didn't, didn't need to be. He didn't need to be because they're rushing. They just ran it down our throats. And that's what I want to quick talk about. Yes. Okay. So here's here's what happened, Sam. Okay. The Seattle Seahawks are hurting at tight, at the tight end position, right? Yep. They had to put in Big Boy Brown, number seventy six at tight end. You saw yep. him that whole game; he was yep. shifting like a tight end, and that's what he was listed as, yep. right? So when you think about it, they were literally basically in a jumbo package, whether it was in shotgun or in the affirmation, yes. the entire game. They, and so they had it was basically like they were up a man. ESPN put uh, a, a stat on last night, and I it was they they had six offensive linemen on like on like sixty percent of their plays. Yeah, and so you wonder why they ran for so much. And granted, one of the, you can take away like fifty yards because that they they counted the uh, the punt, the fake punt as yardage. Oh, so oh. yeah, so you can take away like fifty of that, but uh, twenty nine. It was it was just twenty nine. Okay, well there you go. So, but regardless of the fact, they they had they impose our will against they us. Have, Chris Carson had one hundred and two yards, and he was out for like a full quarter. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I gave. I don't think I ever gave Chris Carson and Penny as much credit as I as I no. as I should have been. Well, and it's interesting because they've typically been struggling in the run game yeah. up until this point. Carson like, can last, run. Last year they they I don't think they had a hundred yard game yeah. last year. And he's a big. He kind of reminds me of yeah. Madison a little bit, kind of like that bulky yeah. stockier guy, you know. Yeah, and they were doing a phenomenal job, and yeah. they were creating these holes. 
and the Vikings front seven just couldn't stop it. And that was no. that's been the strength of our defense. It, we we'd always been saying for all year that you know our run defense is fa- fantastic and our pass defense needs to get it figured out. And it was the opposite last night. And, and it was all because listen, because the, the the yard the average yards per run that they had was about five point five, right? And that was all because the linemen were getting to the second tier yeah. is what they call it. They were all in the second yeah. tier. And so every time you saw Carson was getting five down, five yards down the, yeah. down the, down the field. There. 5.1. Five, okay. Then but maybe that, went down but a little again, bit. But again, there, there was one that went for 29 yards. That was the fake. So Carson averaged 4.4. Penny averaged 4.5. But that was on 23 and 15 carries respectively. And so here, like. here's what I, wanted to quick, what I wanted to quick talk about. A little discussion here. Yeah. So I, I have a feeling that Zimmer... With his history of, of uh, Russell Wilson and what he's done to us in the past, because he's five and zero, make it yeah. six and zero now, right? He game plan for only Russell Wilson. Yeah. Well, Russell Strictly. Wilson had four yards or four four rushes for thirteen yards. Right. And so I think they did a fairly and they, good job. And they contained him well. Yeah, they, they contained him very well. Right. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Right. Exactly. But what I'm saying is, I think not enough attention was given to the fact that hey, well, they might run the ball more than we're expecting. Yeah. You know? And I, maybe he just thought that we would do better. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It was. It's very interesting and. It, what was interesting to me was that they didn't they didn't uh, make any adjustments to yeah. to to stop that run game because it was for the full sixty minutes they were able to it run was the on whole us. time right and it, I it was just it was disappointing to see because you know it, it's one thing when they get a deep pass on you every now and then but when they're consistently able to get right. six yards on the ground it's like come on and here's my question is there is there anything you can do about that yeah you scheme like what, it though? differently you well I because mean, because i think here's the here's the the issue with russell wilson is that you scheme it differently and then he goes out and he beats you through the air but he wasn't able to do that last night i mean yeah, he, that's he, true. he he punked roads on one big yeah, play yeah, yeah, yeah but that was about it that, and yeah, that was right. i true. mean we we can all uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about roads a little bit later uh, but yeah, Seattle they they ran the ball real well. They uh, did an admirable job in the passing game. DK Metcalf, uh, six for seven. I thought that his hands were were made of rocks, and he did a did a pretty good job. Six receptions, seventy five yards. You know who didn't have a single catch? Who? Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Yeah, zero. Can we catches. give uh, Mackenzie Alexander some wow. credit? Yes, because he was on him. Good yeah, job, Mackenzie that, Alexander. Alexander did a phenomenal yeah. job. I I completely agree. Uh, David Moore was the one. Was he the one that punked? Uh, yeah, he was the one that punked uh, Xavier Rhodes on that long touchdown pass. So it, where Xavier oh, thought eighty three, number yeah. eighty three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that was well. Well, let's let's talk about that while we're on it. Yeah. Okay. There was some clear miscommunication. Clear miscommunication. Because after the play, you saw Rhodes. They showed that little little yeah. video of, of Rhodes like grabbing Harrison Smith's yeah. head and yeah. like I think he was I don't know Paul. He, 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 like, we just need to communicate he, better. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so I, I want to know what happened because I don't think Rhodes had any clue that Harrison Smith was choked up on the line there. Well, but he, even if he didn't, he was still in man coverage. I but but the way that Rhodes let him just run by him, he expected there to, him to be over the top. I don't know if cuz he didn't he didn't even take he, he didn't even follow him that well. That that close. Right, he just I, let him go. Which I astounds me cuz I I feel like that was a he was still supposed to be in man coverage. I know. Maybe he wasn't and he, he Unless Some, Smith made something. unless Smith made his own conscious decision to just choke up and, and he, maybe and he didn't and maybe tell Rhodes well, or because didn't hear, at that or point maybe he didn't hear at that point in the game it was the, it was being it was getting very frustrating it was it was in the third quarter the quarter they put up seventeen points on us granted they had only put ten up at that time but it was frustrating because we were start we were down now um, you know it was twenty to seventeen and Her- and they had been running all over us you know they had been running they had yeah. been getting six yards and maybe Harrison Smith was just like screw this I'm gonna I'm gonna s- I'm gonna do whatever I can to stop right, to right, shut this run right, game down. Right. I I don't know. So, it, dude, I mean, is Rhodes done? I know we've talked about this before, but I I mean, I think we should have traded him two years ago. But there's I, you're right. There's no going back. And the problem is, is Rhodes came out of the game last night, and they were able to throw all over you. So he so looks so lost. He, so I I don't think we 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 have I don't think we have the assets to to let Rhodes go as of right no, now. No, it's, it's too some, late in the season. It's something. Well, no, not even for the season. I'm saying looking forward into oh, the future. Yeah. You know, I if we if we let him go, we have to bring in another big body. We have to bring right. in a, a big body guy who has a reputation that you know right. that quarterbacks are going to respect. Yep. You know, and and not and, and not to be honest, on. it's kind of I feel like it's kind of tough to find a big body who's as quick as Rhodes was yeah. when he came out of college. Yeah. When I, when I picture him and like even Mackenzie Alexander. Alexander, Trey Wayans, those are just small, quick guys. You yeah. know, like they can't match up with the big boys. Yeah, you we, know, we well, and Xavier Rhodes was he was he came around prior to the Zimmer era. And right. If you look at right. all of the all of the corners that Zimmer likes, they're the smaller, quicker yeah, guys. They are. You know, right, right. right. Where it's like, all right, we need a bigger body. Right. Granted, Trey Wayans is a, is a bigger, faster guy, mm-hmm. but I think Zimmer's more about speed than size. Yeah. 
And so, so while we're while we're talking about this, I do want to address one narrative that actually did bother the heck out of me. Was ESPN's Kirk Cousins is zero and eight on Monday Night Football? He is the worst in NFL history. Kirk Cousins, okay, you go yeah, ahead. I, I understand that. Yes, he's the quarterback, right? And more often than not, as the general of the team, you are held more accountable in those in the game. Yeah, you just are, right? That's just the nature of the game. You paid the most, you're more yeah. accountable, right? Absolutely. But give me a break. That was that, a, that, that was, was a team. That loss. was some. That's some. F- if anything, yes. if, if anything, that was on the defense. That was 100%. Yeah, because did Kirk Cousins give De- up 400 yards and, you know, 200 no. on the ground? You know what I mean? No. So that I was I, – I'm being honest. Like, Kirk Cousins' offense, they played pretty well. They minus, played pretty minus, well, yeah. Minus the, the, against, the blunders. Against a, against a very good Seattle defense. Against yeah, they played very two, well. Now they, put the, up, they put up 30 points on a very good that's Seattle what I mean. defense. Yeah. You mean 31? Uh, 30. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, tell me not to say it's that 12th man pat it's that 12th man dude for the, for those of us for for those who aren't following we're talking about the dan bailey missed <laughs> you extra and point. I are just like mentally <laughs> acknowledging what we're talking about we're, we're talking about the dan bailey missed extra point did you have that gut feeling when he stepped up that it was just it was meant to be that he was meant to miss it yeah but pat i don't think it ended up mattering i mean it was Sam, the, the no, drive where does. we were the, the drive here it, it does it, it's a mental it, thing it, it, it it's Pat, a mental it thing. May, it may have it may have in the grand scheme of things, but when so when we were so we were down four and we were driving, we weren't yet in field goal range to have to drive for that touchdown. Had we been in field goal range and then given up the ball, no, then no, yeah, it would have so, it would have been a, a a big deal. But we weren't even in field goal range yet on I, that last drive. I understand drive. that, but I'm telling you, knowing that hey, okay, the goal is a touchdown, right? Obviously yep. it is, right? It's we're down. Gotta be. Yeah, it's gotta be, right? It was 30, 30 to thirty four. Yep. Right? It was thirty thirty four yep. at the time. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, because yep. it would have been, yeah, yeah, right, right. So what I'm saying is heading into that drive, you can kind of acknowledge like, okay, we need a touchdown. We would love that. But if we can settle for a field goal, we're tied up at 34. Yeah. So I'm saying from a mental aspect, from how you're approaching the drive, it matters. It just does. Yeah. But the fourth down, that was a turnover on downs so was just a quick out route. To, no, I, to and digs, I recognize, you know, and, it and I'm not, I'm not saying know, anything the, about the, that. The drive stalled no, out it before wasn't the digs. It, was, it was the Herb Smith, by Herb's, the way. Oh, was it? To, oh, Dude, you're right. It was to Herb Smith. I'm, okay. I'm not saying that, that play call was, that was, a, well, it's not, it might not even be the play call. It might just be the read. You know, you never know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happened. I, I haven't watched the film from that. I don't know what happened. I don't know what the other receivers were doing. I don't even think Cousins was that that pressured on that play either he just quick got rid of it i know whatever so okay so we'll, we'll get into that a little i just want to close out my my analysis on seattle saying hey they, they did a really good job and i think that this game they they ran all over us i think this game is more about what the vikings weren't able to do and what the vikings did do incorrectly more so than seattle doing enough things correctly to win the game the you know the the two turnovers in our own red zone that gave them essentially a free ten points, uh, and the fact that our defense, you know, they granted they were the ones that ran for two hundred eighteen yards, but our defense was wasn't the wasn't you know they're supposed to be able to stop that. Right. So I think this game is more about what the Vikings weren't able to do more so than what Seattle did. Yeah. So that I. I they're a very good football team. They they are they're you know they're on their well on their way to the playoffs, and they're going to be they're going to be tough for anybody to take on. Um, but I I really think that the Vikings lost that game more than the Seahawks won that game. So here here's what I want to do say. So while I was extremely extremely disappointed because I won't lie that entire week I, I said I felt really good. Yeah, I, I genuinely thought that we were gonna we were gonna snap this narrative that we're zero five against. Yeah. you know what I mean. I just genuinely I had it in my gut and. Up until the the fumble and then Cook going out and Diggs was down on that same play. You know, oh. they were both sitting there on the field. And your heart was just like... That's the season. Yeah. That's it, the season sitting the, on the turf. The this is fine meme freaking goes through your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that that's deflating. You know, obviously they came back and they were fine. Uh, well, Cook isn't fine, but... Or he will be for next week. But what I'm saying at... What I'm saying is I'm not too... I'm not too down on myself. And I'm not like the season's done. You know what I mean? I'm not... Right. I'm not... I'm not over it just right. yet. I'm extremely, extremely proud at how they fought back, dude. Extremely I, proud. I am too. Yeah, and it's sad to have to say that because you're down and we lost. But and it's like as as much as I say that the Vikings were the ones that lost this game more than Seattle won this game. They 
the Vikings played really, really well against up. a really, really good team in a really, really tough environment, and they didn't give up. They didn't and, give up at all. You know, we were down big time in the third. You know, the third they were racked up seventeen points. It was points. thirty-four seventeen. It was thirty-four seventeen, and we fought back, and we very well could. You know, yeah. One play goes differently. You know, we drive and we get a touchdown, and and it's a game. You know, right? You, you never. Know. So I'm just I'm so freaking proud of they, of the way the Vikings yeah. did the you know did what they did last night. Right, and. I, you know, against a team like Seattle in Seattle in that environment, they, I, I truly believe that the Vikings can go toe to toe with any team in the NFL. And hey, you, it didn't come up our way this right. time, but it was, you know, a flip of the coin. Right. Exactly. You know. And 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 while while it's very easy for us to focus on the fact that when we don't play on the road and it's a wild card game, like the thought of just you're gonna lose is in your head, right? That's yeah. just It's just the narrative of how Minnesota sports go, right? I don't know. This year, I, I just have more hope than I than I have. And I and I'm just again it comes back I'm just proud of how they played yeah and, and I know that we can go toe to toe with them you, yeah you know even if our defense is a little lackluster Kirk Cousins in the offense they've been playing phenomenal right well and and Seattle had something more to play for too because they, yeah, they they went yeah. all they went yeah. all the way up to the two seed they took control of their division and now they're up in the two and seed. on that note I want to say December football is as good as it freaking gets oh man this is it. This well, is, and, that, and that's how the NFL wants it to be. They, yeah. they purposely stacked everyone's uh, the, their last three division games in the last three weeks. Right, of the right. That's how it's supposed to be. Well, yeah. But but I'm, what I'm saying is now we're going to be looking at the Chargers. Yep. You know, and obviously the Bears and the Packers. Yep. But then you, now you've got the Eagles too are are kind of slipping yep. in there. You know, and what the I mean? Redskins and, are and still. The Redskins are alive. They're, they're, <laughs> Hey, they're still in the mix. Yeah, and it, this, it's so funny. They'll win their division if the Cowboys lose out. <laughs> if the Eagles lose out, except for their game against the Cowboys, they yeah, have to win that. They need that one. And then the Redskins win out. Then the Redskins will win the NFC East. Probably not. not Dude, that, that likely. That but division. There's hope. That division is such garbage. It's garbage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh man. But yeah. So, all right. So I just want to talk uh, uh, about a few things that the Vikings did really well. Kirk Cousins, twenty-two for thirty-eight. You know, that's not great, but he had 276 yards, uh, 7.3 uh, average, two touchdowns, an interception that should have been P.I. Um, he, you know, not a great QBR, not a great rating, but I thought he 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 captained the team well enough. I won't I won't say he generaled the team. He captained the team well enough. Right. Uh, which is a lower rank than general. <laughs> he captained the team well enough. Well, he is Captain Kirk. So. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dalvin Cook, uh, nine uh, nine carries, twenty nine yards. He wasn't all that effective, but he came out pretty early. And the, but Alexander Madison came out and he yeah, he, he filled started, in very nice. He filled in very very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to give a shout out to Ant Harris. Because that oh, interception, man. dude, was I was, we were so hyped when that happened. We were so that hyped. That was bonkers. That was incredible. You know, if, we, if you just watch it through, Russell Wilson, like they teach you, is to bat yeah. it down, right? Because right. the lineman could pick that right. up. The poor guy jumped too early, yeah. and he just got the fingertips yeah. on and it just kind of hung a little bit longer yeah. there, and, and, and Han Harris just came flying yeah. in, you know? I, that that was one of the most exciting moments. So, dude, season. honestly, the, you know, while we're talking about positive things, the first half went very well for us. Yeah, it went it, very, it very really well. did. You know, and we ended the half on a, with a field goal too. Yeah. Like you're, and then we get the ball exactly back exactly like we're supposed to. Exactly. You know, we won the coin toss like you were saying. Yeah. You know, we got the ball back, and of course, you know that first drive stalled, right? Yep. But you know, they, you know, they hung through. But. Yeah. And I thought our, you know, just all around, you know, they were stopping the run, but we were figuring out ways to scheme around it. You know, those those uh, those stretches to the outside weren't really working. You know, we were able to scheme some weird. You know, we had that one jet sweep to step on that one. In that the first went, half, that yeah. for a while. Well, you know, how about the, the pass to the, CJ Ham? The, the pass to CJ Ham. <laughs> the you know the delayed uh, the yeah. delayed uh, draw to Madison. You know the, we we did a lot of really good stuff in the running game, and I and I really enjoy that. We did some really good stuff in the passing game too. You know they were saying for the first half, Kirk didn't th- throw the ball in the air more than five yards to pass the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, but I, I want to see Kirk let it rip some more. I know. I really do. And, dude, and I, let's quick talk about that because. I think when you're able to get pressure on Kirk Cousins, he just he falters a little bit. Yeah. And Jadavian Clowney Go is safe. a freaking beast. Jadavian Clowney's an, a beast. He's so I good. I think if Jadavian Clowney's not in that game, we win. That yeah, that for sure. Abs- and, yeah. But can we give credit to Rashad Hill, who I thought he played he yeah. played really freaking he played well. Really, yeah, because Riley Reef was out for yeah, most of the yeah, game. He had a yeah. concussion for, yeah. for Rashad Hill to cover Clowney as much as did it because he we didn't give up any sacks. There were no sacks allowed. Yeah. No, no sacks. sacks. No sacks. Yeah, I looked it up. No, you don't even wow. look it up. I looked it up beforehand. Wow. Yeah, there were no sacks. I a I, lot of I pressures. Think I think, a lot of pressures. I think Rashad Hill is a much better tackle than Riley Reef. I'm yeah, not Riley quite Reeve sure why he's not the starter. Matt Khalil I, 2.0. <laughs> but yeah, no, our receivers did, did really well. That Laquan Treadwell touchdown, 58 yards, dude. Okay, so <laughs> Kirk Cousins throws a 58 yard touchdown to Laquan Treadwell wide open, and the announcer are like, oh. 
Wow. They that, didn't care. They're like, oh, that's 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 nice. They didn't care. But then at all. the Seahawks get a first down. They're like, oh, let's go, best team in the league right here. You know, let's go back to Russell Wilson mic'd up. It was sickening. It was like, Come on. They, just, they could not have cared less. That's enough about ESPN. I won't say anything more, but <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Rudolph's touchdown in oh the end zone. My, just that, the one-handed that, nab? Dude, it, flashbacks to Dallas. That was just incredible. Dallas again, yeah. I want to see Kyle Rudolph get more involved. You know, he's just yeah. been playing lights out. And you know what? The beautiful thing about Kyle Rudolph is he's just so big. Yeah. He essentially, he what, he, get it. what he is, is it's a jump ball opportunity. Yeah, you he know? can go up and get it. And Kirk Cousins is allowed to throw the ball a little outside that window because Rudolph isn't going to get it. The guy's yeah. got sticky hands, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Rudolph played played lights out. Um, you know, I, I thought all of our receivers did really well with with what they were I, given. I, Kirk, I, I, I don't know if I agree. Elaborate. I just don't think that they were able to make to separate as much coverage. And I don't know if that was just just Seattle's scheme, but there was I just I there was not much through the air. They have there a really very, they have a very, they have a very good secondary. Yeah, but I'm I'm just saying like I I don't know if it was a scheme, if it was just really well man to man, if it was because Thielen wasn't in and Diggs was double covered. You know what I mean? Diggs was getting double but, triple covered. But I don't yeah. think we did as much to the air as maybe you're kind of portraying. Well, and Kirk had a lot of time in the pocket on, on some occasions. And I saw him going through his reads, and then he throws it, you know, to his check down, and it's just like that. It's disheartening because, like, you know, that he he did the right yeah, things. Right. He was trying to find a receiver that was open, and the receivers weren't. Not open. to mention there were like three that were batted down. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. And I just, I'm not well, mistaken. Kirk does tend to lead the league in batted down balls. Well, that's because he, you know, like they, he didn't have a ball that went more than five yards downfield in the first half. So when you're throwing balls that short, they tend to be lower, you know. So. It's just I I want to see him let a, I want to see more twenty plus yard passes out of him. Yeah, you get it over the line and and you give our receivers a shot to go get it. You know, Adam Thielen was this close to being back this week, yeah. and I I think that might have also been the difference. There was there's a lot of of small you know game of inches type deal. But where, but we also can't sit here and say the injuries is what we lost. No, not saying you're no, saying that. I'm not, no. not saying you're saying that. But because because every team is dealing with. I just it. I want to give a lot of praise to the offense because they showed a lot of resiliency yeah. and they put up thirty points on a really good team. Right. right. Thirty one points. Whatever right. you want to say. Uh, now talking about our defense, I Anthony Harris had a great game, you know, but that was about there it. There was not much. I mean, and we Zimmer was simply out coached on the defensive end, and that's that's just that's been, yeah. that's been the true narrative and, of and this honestly, year on defense. It didn't seem like any one individual did a bad job. It just seemed like our scheme was just it just didn't feel, work. It feels like they're just not communicating like they had been in prior years. You know what I mean? I I don't know. Well, again, you're you're in Seattle. It's a loud stadium. It's tough to communicate. You yeah, know? but but when you think about it, the majority of these players have been with each other for yeah four or five years true. now. You know what I mean? It's true. I I think I, I I genuinely go back to I think I just don't think that Zimmer knew that that Brown seventy six was gonna be was gonna be in there. Yeah. So it was literally like a jumbo set the whole yeah. game. No, it really was. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not fair to have an extra right. lineman on a exactly. linebacker because then getting it's like, up on the because it's getting, like. You can send five on a blitz, but then it's just like a regular pass rush at yeah, that point. And then, like, and then, so then the, you got to send six. And there was numerous clips, too, that they, they pitched it to Carson, right? And 76 was like a linebacker. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, like a tight end. And he was way out there in front, yeah. on, on, like, Rhodes or McKenzie. You know what I mean? There was no shot. No. So no. That, that, in my opinion, that was the biggest difference maker, aside from the turnovers that we had. I thought that, that matchup was just not fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, football is fair. No, I know. But I'm just saying, like, just the way that that happened to yeah. work out. You know? I just... You know, I w- the only thing I'll say about our defense is I don't think any one individual played super poorly. I, I think it was a scheme. I think it was more yeah. Zimmer's issue or the fact that Pete Carroll, I said it, uh, in the preview episode, he's a student of the game. He's very, very, he has a very, very high football IQ. Yeah. And he just outsmarted us. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have much to say I don't about have much the defense. Of, yeah. Except that's, just, that's kind of it. You know, let's, um, I want to talk about going into the next week here a little bit. Or well, be- before before we do that, I just I just want to reiterate, I I love how resilient the Vikings were. Yeah, they put up thirty points on a really good team. Um, they again had a had a huge fourth quarter comeback. Uh, they weren't able to finish it out, but they you know they made it a game all the way up until the very end. Right, and you know right, you convert that third down, you convert that fourth down. Maybe it's a different game, mm-hmm. and it's. It just it came. To, I think it really came down to that that fourth down play. Yeah, and it did well. And the, and the play before that was I, batted down at the line too. To I digs, just, yeah, you know. I just think we did a really good job. And I'm I'm it. While it's sour for me and and you and mm-hmm. all of the Vikings fans right now, it's 
You can still hang your you, head high. You can still hang your head high because they did a they did a very good job. Right. Um. And before we go into next week and what December football is going to look like, I also want to say, you know, going back to week one, I had us at a thirteen and three team. Mm. That is obviously, uh, you know, best we can do is twelve and four. But I will say, the three losses that I had us scheduled for were the Bears in Soldier Field, which was an L. Mm-hmm. It was Kansas City in Kansas City, which was an L. And it was Seattle in Seattle, and that was an L. Yeah. You know, we have that extra loss to Green Bay that yep. we are we will avenge come <laughs> December 23rd. And I don't care what Booger McFarland has to say about yeah. it. I'm not kidding. We will when, we, avenge when, it. when we watch that game, I will mute the TV. But what, what I'm going to say is, you know, the... In my mind, we're still we're still on track. We you know we're you know we've lost these games. They were all games that we absolutely could have won. And in my mind, we're still on track. We're still on the right schedule. We're still on the right trajectory. And you know that about that Green Bay game that throws you know my predictions off a little bit. You know our biggest divisional rival in you know on their home turf. And you know those games could go either way. We knew it was going to be a hard fought game. So in my mind we're still exactly where we're supposed to yeah, be. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. Yeah. So I, I I don't have much to add to that, but that's yeah. So I just on. I just don't I just I just want Vikings fans to hear that and walk back from the ledge because yeah. there's no reason to be on the yeah. ledge right now. No, no, no. And that, that's why I tried to say at the beginning cuz I I think it's a very very real possibility we end 12 and 4. I think we're still a very scary wild card team. Oh, absolutely. Am I? Am and, I not a fan of on, us being on the road in a primetime game on a wild card game? I'm not. And a fan. honestly, the, the the worst thing about being the sixth seed right now is the fact that uh, you know we have the Rams right behind us. You know, yeah. I you know we we'll be playing. You know, if we go even if we go into playoffs as sixth seed, we'll be playing the three seed in wild card weekend. It's probably more than likely going to be the Packers. I kind of hope it is. I I think yeah, that's best think, case scenario. I, I think that's best. Case I think scenario. that's best case scenario. You know, 100%. and we beat them and then whoever else wins, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll then be playing the highest seeded team, which would be, uh, either the Seahawks or the Saints, yeah. which I hope it's the Seahawks because it's very, very difficult to, to, go to, New, to, to New beat this. Yeah. Well, well, not just to go to New Orleans. It's very, very difficult to beat the same team twice in a season. And I don't That's think, true. I don't think Seattle gets the better of us in the playoffs. We'll see. So they are, we'll see. They are. Well, what do you mean? They're six and oh, just playing us in general. What? <laughs> Stop. Well, that matters. The, the, those are teams from years past. Richard Sherman was still on their no, no, team. No, 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 no. Russell. I'm just talking about Russell. Oh, Wilson. you're just talking I'm, about Russell. Wilson. I mean Russell Wilson. Yeah, yeah I'm. Yeah. I just, I, I, you know, it, it, the playoffs will be tough, and it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how the NFL gets there. Yeah. Uh, with that in mind, do you want to talk about December football well, a little bit? Okay, so I let me. We we can, but I was just thinking. I mean, we could just say that for the next episode since that's our preview. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. We can save that. Yeah, let's. December football is going to be. It's it's not just in the NFC North, not just with the Minnesota Vikings, but December football is going to be great yeah. around the NFL. And then, I, I then cannot. You, you wait. just get to watch every other matchup a little yeah. more closely. I cannot wait. Yeah, it's gonna be fun and stressful. All right. So uh, join us next time on Diggs Sideline Podcast. We'll be previewing the uh, Vikings Lions game at US Bank Stadium uh, coming this Ooh. coming at you this Sunday. So. Uh, Until then, Skull Vikings. Thank you.